Welcome to Liberty Lockdown. Please scan your barcode. Your liberty ain't gone, but yeah, it's on hold. Where did it come from and where did it go? What it do, you beautiful savages? Clint Russell, Liberty Lockdown. As many of you have heard, the Durham Report, finally released, only took a quadrillion years. Uh, and the, the, <laughs> the news, the, the media is obviously uh, burying this story, and I wanted to see their reporting versus the truth of the report, and do they comport with one another? I thought that this would be a fascinating uh, study as to the truth and safety of our media apparatus. Uh, so the Durham report is about 300 pages. So I'm not going to lie to you and say I read the whole thing. I did not, but I did skim it and I did read the executive uh, summary. And I'm going to have, I'm going to read that to you because I think that it's very important that you understand what your tax dollars went to investigating. And for those that are totally in the dark as to what this is all about, this is the investigation into the investigation uh, <laughs> as to whether or not uh, Donald Trump had colluded with the Russians to win the election in 2016. So that's the the accusation that was made against him and obviously perpetuated for six, seven years. Uh, this is the investigation into those allegations. So this is what his summary states. The public record contains a substantial body of information relating to former President Trump's and the Trump Organization's relationship with Russian businesses, Russian business people, and Russian officials, as well as separate evidence of Russia's attempts to interfere in the 2016 presidential election. These and related subjects are well documented in the careful examination undertaken by the Department's Office of the Inspector General of issues related to the FBI's crossfire hurricane investigation and its use of Foreign Intelligence Surve Surveillance Act FISA authorities. Uh, crossfire hurricane was the the operation that they ran to get to the bottom of the, I mean, allegedly to get to the bottom of the Trump-Russia collusion claims. Uh, but in reality, it was, uh, <laughs> in my estimation, con concocting that entire case. But We'll get there. Uh, former former FBI Director Robert Mueller, as detailed in his report entitled Report on the Investigation into Russian Interference in the 2016 Presidential Election, issued in March 2019, and the Senate Select Committee on Intelligence entitled Russian Active Measures, Campaigns, and Interference in the 2016 U.S. Election. The scope of these earlier inquiries, the amount of important information gathered, and the contributions they have made to our understanding of Russian election interference efforts are a tribute to the diligent work and dedication of those charged with the responsibility of conducting them. Our review and investigation, in turn, has focused on separate but related questions, including the following. Was there adequate predication for the FBI to open the Crossfire Hurricane investigation from its inception on July 31st, 2016 as a full counterintelligence and foreign agents registration act FARA investigation given the requirements of the attorney general's guidelines for FBI domestic operations and FBI policies relating to the US use of the least intrusive investigative tools necessary? Was the opening of Crossfire Hurricane as a full investigation on July 31st, 2016 consistent with how the FBI handled other intelligence it had received prior to that date concerning attempts by foreign interests to influence the Clinton and other campaigns? Similarly, did the FBI properly consider other highly significant intelligence it received at virtually the same time as that used Oh, as that uh, information used to predicate Crossfire Hurricane, but which related not to the Trump campaign, but rather to a purported Clinton campaign plan to vilify Donald Trump by stirring up a scandal claiming interference by Russian security services, which might have shed light on some of the Russian information the FBI was receiving from third parties, including the Steele dossier, the Alpha Bank allegations, and confidential human source reporting. If not, were any provable federal crimes committed in failing to do so? Was there evidence that the actions of, an F of any FBI personnel or third parties relating to the Crossfire Hurricane investigation violated any federal criminal statutes, including the prohibition against making false statements to federal officials? If so, was that evidence sufficient to prove guilt beyond a reasonable doubt? Was there evidence that the actions of the FBI or department personnel in providing false or incomplete information to the Foreign Intelligence Surveillance Court 
violated any federal criminal statutes? If so, was there evidence sufficient to prove guilt beyond a reasonable doubt? Our findings and conclusions regarding these and related questions are sobering. State of intelligence community information regarding Trump and Russia prior to the opening of Crossfire Hurricane. As set forth in greater detail in Section 4A3B before the initial receipt by FBI headquarters of information from Australia on July 28, 2016, concerning comments reportedly made in a tavern on May 16, 2016 by George Papadopoulos, an unpaid foreign policy advisor to the Trump campaign. Unpaid, mind you. <laughs> Crazy. The government possessed no verified intelligence reflecting that Trump or the Trump campaign was involved in a conspiracy or collaborative relationship with officials of the Russian government. Indeed, based on the evidence gathered in the multiple exhaustive and costly federal investigations of these matters, including the instant investigation, neither U.S. law enforcement nor the intelligence community appears to have possessed any actual evidence of collusion in their holdings at the commencement of the Crossfire Hurricane investigation. I'm going to read that one more time. Based on the evidence gathered in the multiple exhaustive and costly federal investigations of these matters, including the instant investigation, neither U.S. law enforcement nor the intelligence community appears to have possessed any actual evidence of collusion in their holdings at the commencement of the Crossfire Hurricane investigation. They had nothing, folks. They had no actual evidence to justify the commencement of the crossfire hurricane investigation. Just want you to really internalize what that means. Whole cloth fiction, folks. The opening of crossfire hurricane. As set forth in greater detail in section four, the record in this matter reflects that upon receipt of unevaluated intelligence information from Australia, the FBI swiftly opened the crossfire hurricane investigation. In particular, at the direction of Deputy Director Andrew McCabe, De Deputy Assistant Director for Counterintelligence Peter Strzok opened Crossfire Hurricane immediately. Strzok, at a minimum, had pronounced hostile feelings towards Trump. The matter was opened as a full investigation without ever having spoken to the persons who provided the information. Wow. Further, the FBI did so without any significant review of its own intelligence databases, collection and examination of any re relevant intelligence from other U.S. intelligence entities, interviews of witnesses essential to understanding the raw information it had received, or using any of the standard analytical tools typically employed by the FBI in evaluating raw intelligence. Had it done so, again, as set out in Section 4, A3, B, and C, the FBI would have learned that their own experienced Russia analysts had no information about Trump being involved with Russian leadership officials, nor were others in sensitive positions at the CIA, the NSA, and the Department of State aware of such evidence concerning the subject. In addition, FBI records prepared by Strzok in February and March 2017 show that at the time of the opening of Crossfire Hurricane, the FBI had no information in its holdings indicating that at any time during the campaign, anyone in the Trump campaign had been in contact with any Russian intelligence officials. Wow. The speed and manner in which the FBI opened and investigated Crossfire Hurricane during the presidential election season based on raw, unanalyzed, and uncorroborated intelligence also reflected a noticeable departure from how it approached prior matters involving possible attempted foreign election interference plans aimed at the Clinton campaign. As described in Section 4B, in the 18 months leading up to the 2016 election, the FBI was required to deal with a number of proposed investigations that had the potential of affecting the election. In each of the, those instances, the FBI moved with considerable caution. In one such matter discussed in Section 4B1, FBI headquarters and department officials required defensive briefings to be, pro to be provided to Clinton and other officials or candidates who appeared to be the target targets of foreign interference. In another, the FBI elected to end an investigation after one of its longtime and valuable CHSs, that's a confidential human uh, source, went beyond what was authorized and made an improper and possibly illegal financial contribution to the Clinton campaign on behalf of a foreign entity as a precursor to a much larger donation being contemplated. 
And in a third, the Clinton Foundation matter, both senior FBI and department officials placed restrictions on how those matters were to be handled, such that essentially no investigative activities occurred for months leading up to the election. These examples are also markedly different from the FBI's actions with respect to other highly significant intelligence it received from a trusted foreign source pointing to a Clinton campaign plan to vilify Trump by tying him to Vladimir Putin so as to divert attention from her own concerns relating to her use of a private email server. Unlike the FBI's opening of a full investigation of unknown members of the Trump campaign based on raw, uncorroborated information, in this separate matter involving a purported Clinton campaign plan, the FBI never opened any type of inquiry, issued any taskings, employed any analytical personnel, or produced any analytical products in, con in connection with the information. This lack of action was despite the fact that the significance of the Clinton plan intelligence was such as to have prompted the director of the CIA to brief the president, vice president, attorney general, director of the FBI, and other senior government officials about its content within days of its receipt. It was also of an, enough importance for the CIA to send a former, uh, excuse me, a formal written referral memorandum to Director Comey and the Deputy Assistant Director of the FBI's Counterintelligence Division, Peter Strzok, for their consideration and action. The investigative referral provided examples of information the Crossfire Hurricane Fusion Cell had gleaned to date. The Crossfire Hurricane Investigation Within days after opening Crossfire Hurricane, the FBI opened full investigations on four members of the Trump campaign team, George Papadopoulos, Carter Page, Paul Manafort, and Michael Flynn. No defensive briefing was provided to Trump or anyone in the campaign concerning the information received from Australia that suggested there might be some type of collusion between the Trump campaign and the Russians, either prior to or after these investigations were opened. So just think about that for a second. So you have basically the same information uh, or the same allegation style of allegations that are being made both against the Trump campaign and the Clinton campaign. Well, the FBI sits down with the Clinton campaign to inform them of this investigation and basically buries it while simultaneously they investigate the Trump collusion uh, allegations very, very deeply and they do not inform Trump or anyone in his campaign whatsoever. You, you see the difference in treatment based off of which uh, political, I don't even want to say political party, but whether or not you're on their team. Pretty, pretty stark, huh? <clears throat> Instead, the FBI began working on requests for the use of, a FISA, of FISA authorities against Page and Papadopoulos. The effort as related to Papadopoulos proved unsuccessful. Similarly, the initial effort directed at Page was unsuccessful until the Crossfire Hurricane investigators first obtained what were de designated as company intelligence reports generated by Christopher Steele, the Steele dossier. As set forth in Section 4D and 3, and in brief below, the Steele reports were first provided by the FBI in early July 2016, but for unexplained reasons, only made their way to the Crossfire Hurricane investigators in mid-September. The reports were ostensibly assembled based on information provided to Steele and his company by a primary subsource, who the FBI eventually determined in December 2016 was Igor Danchenko. Our investigation determined that the Crossfire Hurricane investigators did not and could not corroborate any of the sub substantive allegations contained in the Steele reporting, nor was Steele able to produce corroboration for any of the reported allegations, even after being offered $1 million or more by the FBI for such corroboration. Further, when interviewed by the FBI in January 2017, Danchenko also was unable to corroborate any of the substantive allegations some su substantive allegations in the reports. Rather, Danchenko characterized the information he provided to Steele as, quote, rumor and speculation, end quote, and the product of casual conversation. Section 4 describes other efforts undertaken by the Crossfire Hurricane investigators working on the Page FISA application. Those efforts included having CHS's record conversations with Page, Papadopoulos, and senior Trump foreign policy advisor. The FBI's own rec records and the recordings established that Page made multiple exculpatory statements to the in individuals identified as CH 
S1, but the Crossfire Hurricane investigators failed to make that information known to the department attorneys or the FISC. Page also made explicit statements refuting allegations contained in the Steele reporting about his lack of any relationship with Paul Manafort, but the FBI failed to follow logical investigative leads related to those statements and to report to department lawyers what they found. Similarly, Multiple recordings of Papadopoulos were made by CHS1 and 2nd CHS, in which Papadopoulos also made multiple exculpatory statements that were not brought to the attention of the department lawyers or the FISC. Furthermore, our investigation resulted in the prosecution and conviction of an FBI OGC attorney for intentionally falsifying a document that was material to the FISC's consideration of one of the Page FISA applications. So in other words... An FBI agent, OGC attorney, sorry, not an agent, but an OGC attorney for the FBI, was found guilty of falsifying documents to generate this investigation. Uh, and uh, ultimately, I think Page actually had charges brought against him. I, I could be mistaken, but um, yeah. Pretty, pretty smoking gun, is it not, folks? The Steele dossier. In the spring of 2016, Perkins Coy, a U.S.-based international law firm acting as counsel to the Clinton campaign, retained Fusion GPS, a U.S.-based investigative firm, to conduct opposition research on Trump and his associates. In mid-May 2016, Glenn Simpson of Fusion GPS met with Steele in the United Kingdom and subsequently retained Steele and his firm, Orbis Business Intelligence, to investigate Trump's ties to Russia. Steele described himself as a former intelligence official for the British government, MI5, MI6, ring a bell, and was also at the time an FBI CHS, so double agent. This guy's a con uh, confidential human source for the FBI and former British intelligence. Hello! Beginning in July 2016 and continuing through December 2016, the FBI received a series of reports from Steele and Orbis that contained derogatory information about Trump concer concerning Trump's purported ties to Russia. As discussed in Section 4, Steele provided the first of his reports to his FBI handler on July 5th. These reports were colloquially referred to as the Steele dossier or Steele reports. As noted, it was not until mid-September that the Crossfire Hurricane investigators received several of the Steele reports. Within days of the receipt, the unvetted and unverified Steele reports were used to support probable cause in the FBI's FISA applications targeting page. So... You have an FBI attorney who's doc doctoring documents. You also have a whole cloth fiction based off of rumor, innuendo, and outright lies that generates the Steele report, which ultimately means that they are able to get their FISA application approved to launch the Crossfire Hurricane investigation in full. That's me talking, not the report. Uh, God, what a nightmare. <laughs> uh, so they got their FISA applications targeting page, a U.S. citizen who, for a period of time, had been an advisor to Trump. As discussed later in the report, this was done at a time when the FBI knew that the same information Steele had provided to the FBI had also been fed to the media and others in Washington, D.C. In particular, one allegation contained in an undated Steele report identified as 2016-095 described a well-developed conspiracy of cooperation between Trump, his campaign, and senior Russian officials. This allegation would ultimately underpin the four FISA applications targeting Page. Specifically, the allegation stated, speaking in confidence to a compatriot in late July 2016, Source E, an ethnic Russian close, close associate of Republican U.S. presidential candidate Donald Trump, admitted that there was a well-developed conspiracy of cooperation between them and the Russian leadership. This was managed on the Trump side by the Republican candidate's campaign manager, Paul Manafort, who was using foreign policy advisor Carter Page and others as intermediaries. The two sides had a mutual interest in defeating Democrat presidential candidate Hillary Clinton, whom President Putin apparently both hated and feared. Igor Danchenko, Steele's primary subsource. As noted, the FBI attempted over time to investigate and analyze the Steele reports, but ultimately was not able to confirm or corroborate any of the substantive allegations contained in those reports. In the context of these efforts, and as discussed in Section 4, the FBI learned that Steele relied primarily on a U.S.-based Russian national, 
Igor Danchenko to collect information that ultimately formed the core allegations found in the reports. Specifically, our investigation discovered that Danchenko himself had told another person that he, Danchenko, was responsible for 80% of the intel and 50% of the analysts, or excuse me, analysis contained in the Steele dossier. In December 2016, the FBI identified Danchenko as Steele's primary subsource. Danchenko agreed to meet with the FBI and, under the protection of an immunity letter, he and his attorney met with the Crossfire Hurricane investigators on January 24th through the 26th, 2017. Therefore, from January 2017 through October 2020, and as part of its efforts to determine the truth or falsity of specific information the Steele reports, the FBI conducted multiple interviews of Danchenko regarding, among other things, the information he provided to Steele. As discussed in Section 4, during these interviews, Danchenko was unable to provide any corroborating evidence to support the Steele allegations, and further described his interactions with his subsource as rumor and speculation and conversations of a casual nature. Significant parts of what Danchenko told the FBI were inconsistent with what Steele told the FBI during his prior interview in October 2016 and September 2017. So Steele also lied. Everybody lied. <laughs> At no time, <clears throat> however, was the FISC informed of these inconsistencies. Moreover, Notwithstanding the repeated assertions in the page FISA applications that Steele's primary subsource was based in Russia, Danchenko for many years had lived in the Washington, D.C. area. <laughs> How you like that? <laughs> That's just too, too good to be true, man. After learning that, that Russia or excuse me, after learning that Danchenko continued to live in the Washington area and had not left except for domestic and foreign travel, the FBI never corrected this assertion in the three subsequent page FISA renewal applications. Rather, beginning in March 2017, the FBI engaged Danchenko as a CHS and began, began making regular financial payments to him for information. <laughs> None of which corroborated Steele's reporting. So they're just paying this dude. All right, so they're paying this dude to perpetuate a lie, folks, that they can't corroborate and they know it, and they're paying him. Come on. The unresolved prior FBI counterintelligence investigation of Danchenko. <laughs> so <laughs> he had already he had already been investigated by the FBI. This is incredible. <clears throat> Importantly. And as discussed in Section 4, the FBI knew in January 2017 that Danchenko had been the subject of an FBI counterintelligence investigation from 2009 to 2011. In late 08, while Danchenko was employed by the Brooking Institution, hello, he engaged two fellow employees about wonder whether one of the employees might be willing or able in the future to provide classified information in exchange for money. Holy hell. According to one employee, Danchenko believed that he, the employee, might be following a mentor into the incoming Obama administration and have access to classified information. During this, ex during this exchange, Danchenko informed the employee that he had access to people who were willing to pay for classified information. The concerned employee passed this information to a U.S. government contact, and the information was subsequently passed to the FBI. Based on this information, in 2009, the FBI opened a preliminary investigation into Danchenko. The FBI converted its investigation into a full investigation after learning that Danchenko had been identified as an associate of two FBI counterintelligence subjects and had previous contact with the Russian embassy and known Russian intelligence officers. Also, as discussed in Section 4 at, the, at that earlier time, agents had interviewed several former colleagues of Danchenko who raised concerns about Danchenko's potential involvement with Russian intelligence. For example, one such colleague who had inter interned at a U.S. intelligence agency informed the office that Danchenko frequently inquired about that person's knowledge of a specific Russian military matter. Meanwhile, in July 2010, the FBI initiated a request to use FISA authorities against Danchenko, which was subsequently routed to department attorneys in August 2010. However, the investigation into Danchenko was closed in March 2011 after the FBI incorrectly concluded that Danchenko had left the country and returned to Russia. Let me interject here and just say, are you sure that they thought that? Or do you think that they said, let's uh, make this guy a CI and put him in our back pocket for future purposes? 
Just a thought. Our review, our review found no indication that the Crossfire Hurricane investigators were ever attempted to resolve the prior Danchenko espionage matter before opening him as a paid CHS. Clint's right. Moreover, our investigation found no indication that the Crossfire Hurricane investigators disclosed the existence of Danchenko's unresolved counterintelligence investigation to the department attorneys who were responsible for drafting the FISA renewal applications targeting Carter Page. In other words, they hid the fact that this dude was a scumbag liar and probably on their payroll. Hello. As a result, the FISC was never advised of information that very well may have affected the FISC's view of Steele's primary subsource and Steele's reliability and trustworthiness. Equally important is the fact that in not resolving Danchenko's status vis-a-vis -vis the Russian intelligence services, it appears the FBI never gave appropriate consideration to the possibility that the intelligence Danchenko was providing to Steele, which again, according to Danchenko himself, made up a significant majority of the information in the Steele dossier reports, was, in whole or in part, Russian disinformation. <laughs> this is fantastic. Danchenko's relationship with Charles Dolan. During the relevant time period, Danchenko maintained a relationship with Charles Dolan, a Virginia-based public relations professional who had previously held multiple positions and roles in the Democratic National Committee and the Democratic Party. In his role as a public relations professional, Dolan focused much of his career interacting with Eurasian clients with a particular focus on Russia. As described in Section 4, Dolan previously conducted business with the Russian Federation and maintained relationships with several key Russian government officials, including Dmitry Peskov, the powerful press secretary of the Russian presidential administration. A number of these Russian government officials with whom Dolan maintained a relationship and was in contact with at the time Denchenko was collecting information for Steele would later appear in the dossier. So it looks like as if this guy was actually feeding him this info. In the summer and fall of 2016, at the time Danchenko was collecting information for Steele, Dolan traveled to Moscow, as did Danchenko, in connection with the business conference. As discussed in Section 4, the business conference was held at the Ritz-Carlton Moscow, which, according to the Steele report, was allegedly the site of a salacious sexual conduct, conduct on the part of Trump. This is the hookers peeing on him nonsense. Danchenko would later inform the FBI that he learned of these allegations through Ritz-Carlton staff members. Total lie. Our investigation, however, revealed that it was not Dolan, or excuse me, that it was Dolan, not Danchenko, who actually interacted with the hotel staff identified in the Steele report. So between the two, Dolan appears to the more likely source of the allegations. So an actual DNC, Democratic Party operative, is the source of the P-tape. Think about that, folks. Think about it. This is all Hillary Clinton. All Hillary. As discussed in Section 4, our investigation also uncovered that Dolan was the definitive source for at least one allegation in the Steele reports. This allegation contained in in Steel Report 2016-105 concerned the circumstances surrounding the resignation of Paul Manafort from the Trump campaign. I've had Paul Manafort on the show, by the way, if you guys want to check that out. <clears throat> when, interf when interviewed by the office, Dolan admitted that he fabricated the allegation about Manafort what appeared, that appeared in the Steele report. So Dolan admitted that he had fabricated the allegation about Manafort. How do you like that? Our investigation also revealed that in some instance, Dolan independently received other information strikingly similar to allegations that would later appear in the, stole, in the Steele report. So this is Dolan. Dolan's the guy. This is, he's basically writing this thing. Nevertheless, when interviewed by the FBI, Danchenko denied that Dolan was a source for any information in the Steele report. So he is the source. He's basically writing the motherfucking report, and he's and Danchenko's covering for him. Why would he do that? Because he's being paid to do that job, in my humble opinion. Furthermore, as discussed in Section 4, during the relevant time period, Dolan maintained a business relationship with Olga Galkina, a childhood friend of Danchenko, who according to Danchenko, was a key source for many of the allegations contained in the Steele report. In fact, when Galkina was interviewed by the FBI in August 2017, she admitted to providing Dolan with information that would later appear in the Steele reports. Good God, this is crazy. The FBI's failure to interview Charles Dolan. So after all of this, the FBI doesn't even investigate, or he doesn't even interview the motherfucker. Ugh. 
our investigation revealed that the Crossfire Hurricane investigators were aware of Dolan and his connections to Danchenko and the Steele reports. In fact, as discussed in Section 4 in early October 2016, Steele informed the FBI that Dolan was a person who might have relevant, relevant information about Trump. So why didn't they interview him then, huh? Ask yourself that. The obvious answer is they knew exactly who Dolan was and where the information was coming from because this was their fucking plan, folks. Connect one goddamn dot. The FBI interviewed hundreds of individuals through the course of the Crossfire Hurricane and later inv investigations, and yet it did not interview Dolan as a possible source of information about Trump. God, this is infuriating. Our investigators interviewed Dolan on several occasions, as well as the two other persons mentioned by Steele. Dolan initially denied being a source of information for the Steele reports. When, however, he was shown a particular Steele report re relating to Paul Manafort and his resignation as Trump's campaign manager, along with related emails about between himself and Danchenko in August 2016, he acknowledged that the reporting mirrored the information he had provided to, to Danchenko. Dolan acknowledged to the office that he fabricated this information. Jesus. Although both Steele and Olga Galkina suggested to the FBI that Dolan may have had information related to the Steele reports, our investigation was not able to definitively show that Dolan was the actual source, whether wittingly or unwittingly, for any additional allegations set forth in the Steele reports. Regardless, in light of the foregoing, there does not appear to have been an objectively sound reason for the FBI's failure to interview Dolan. So in other words... Uh, he's not gonna, he's not gonna go after Dolan either. Why? None of these people are on your, on your team, folks. Danchenko's claims regarding Sergei Mil Milian. Perhaps the most damning allegation the Steele dossier reports was Company Report 2016-95, which Steele attributed to Source E, one of Danchenko's supposed subsources. This report, portions of which were included in each of the four-page FISA applications, contributed to the public narrative of Trump's conspiring and colluding with Russian officials. As discussed in Section 4D, Danchenko's alleged source for the information, Source E, was an individual by the name of Sergei Milian, who was the president of the Russian-American Chamber of Commerce in New York City and a public Trump supporter. The evidence uncovered by the office showed that Danchenko never spoke with Sergei Milian and simply fabricated the allegations that he attributed to Milian. Unbelievable. When interviewed by Crossfire Hurricane investigators in, in late January 2017, Danchenko said that Source E in Report 2016-95 sounded as though it was Sergei Milian. <laughs> As discussed in Section 4, Danchenko stated that he never actually met with Milian. Instead, he said that in late July 2016, he received an anonymous call from a person who did not identify himself, but who spoke with a Russian accent. Danchenko further explained that he thought it might have been Milian, someone Danchenko previously had emailed twice and received no response. <laughs> he doesn't know this guy, can't get his emails uh, you know, replied to, and yet he gets a, an anonymous call with a dude with a Russian accent, and he's like, that's my homie Milian. So, so full of shit. <clears throat> oh my god uh all right so the total support for the source e information contained in steel report 2016-95 is a purported anonymous call for, oh sorry i already read that uh trump support oh a trump yeah sergey million a trump supporter based on his listening to a youtube video of million <laughs> so he listened to a youtube video he's like that's my homie this, oh my god unfortunately the investigation revealed that instead of taking even basic steps such as securing telephone calls call records for either Danchenko or Milian to investigate Danchenko's hard to believe story about Milian, the Crossfire Hurricane investigators appear to have chosen to ignore this and other red flags concerning Danchenko's credibility as well as Steele's. And why did they ignore it, folks? Because this is what they wanted. Because these guys were working for him, almost certainly. <clears throat> Jesus. The Alpha Bank allegations. The office also investigated the actions of Perkins Coy attorney Michael Sussman and others in connection with Sussman's provision of data and white papers to FBI general counsel James Baker, purporting to show that there existed a covert communications channel between the Trump organization and a Russia-based bank called Alpha Bank. As set forth in Section 4, in doing so, he represented to Baker by text message and in person that he was acting on his own and was not representing any client or company in providing the information to the FBI. 
Our investigation showed that, in point of fact, these representations to Baker were false and that Sussman was representing the Clinton campaign. I'm going to pause to let that soak in. As evidenced by, among other things, his law firm's billing records and internal communications. In addition, Sussman was representing a second client, a technology executive named Rodney Jaffe. As evidenced by various written communications, Sus Sussman's subsequent congressional testimony and other records. Cyber experts from the FBI examined the materials given to Baker and concluded that they did not establish what Sussman claimed they showed. At a later time, Sussman made a separate presentation regarding the Alpha Bank allegations to another U.S. government agency, and it too concluded that the materials did not show what Sussman claimed. In connection with that second presentation, Sussman made a similar false st statement to that agency, claiming that he was not providing that information on behalf of any client. He was working for Hillary Clinton. With respect to the Alpha Bank material, our investigation established that Jaffe had tasked a number of computer technology researchers who worked for companies he was affiliated with and who had access to certain internet records to mine the internet data to establish an inference and narrative trying that, try, or tying then-candidate Trump to Russia. So they're just basically like literally grasping at straws, <laughs> but in this case, just random internet data. In directing these researchers to exploit their access in this matter, in this manner, Jaffe indicated that he was seeking to please certain VIPs. Hillary. In context, referring to individuals at Perkins Coy who were involved in campaign matters and the Clinton campaign. During its investigation, the office also learned that after the 2016 presidential election, Jaffe emailed an individual and told that person that he, Jaffe, was tentatively offered the top cybersecurity job by the Democrats when it looked like they would win. Hey, buddy, gather up this bullshit information so that we can make a case against our number one political competitor, and once we win, we'll make you the head of cybersecurity for the Democrats. It's all so dirty. As explained in Section 4, the evidence collected by the office also demonstrated that prior to providing the unfounded Alpha Bank claims to the FBI, Sussman and Fusion GPS, the Clinton campaign's opposition research for firm, had provided the same information to various news organizations and were pressing reporters to write articles about the alleged secret communications channel. Do you understand this is how it works? They create, they create the... They create the backdrop to an investigation that's based off of nothing, and then they leak the investigation to the media, and then they pressure the media to report on the investigation, which is based off the lies that they planted. You get it? See how it works? Oh, man, this is incredible. Moreover, during his September 2016 meeting at the FBI, Sussman told Baker that an unnamed news outlet was in possession of the information and would soon publish a story about it. The disclosure of the media's involvement caused the FBI to contact the news outlet whose name was eventually provided by Sussman in the hope of delaying any public reporting on the subject. In doing so, it confer confirmed for the New York Times that the FBI was looking into the matter. This is all how this is how they do this shit, folks. On October 31st, 2016, less than two weeks before the election, the New York Times and others published articles on the Alpha Bank matter, and the Clinton campaign issued tweets and public statements on the allegation of a secret channel of communication being used by the Trump Organization and a Russian bank. Allegations that had been provided to the media and the FBI by Fusion GPS and Sussman, both of whom were working for the Clinton campaign. Get it? Hillary plants the story. She basically f forces, or I mean, probably works hand in hand with the FBI to get this investigation based off of nothing rolling. Then they leak the story uh, to the New York Times. The New York Times then, then tries to confirm it with the FBI. The FBI says, please don't report on that. We're still investigating. That then confirms the fact that there is an investigation into the legitimacy of these, which then enables Hillary Clinton to be able to say so on the debate stage. You get it yet? Conclusion. 
Based on the review of Crossfire Hurricane and related intelligence activities, we conclude that the department and the FBI failed to uphold their important mission of strict fidelity to the law in connection with certain events and activities described in this report. As noted, former FBI attorney Kevin Kleinsmith committed a criminal offense by fabricating language in an email that was material to the FBI obtaining a FISA surveillance order. In other instances, FBI personnel working on the same FISA application displayed, at best, a cavalier attitude towards accuracy and completeness. Yeah, that's putting it fucking mildly, bro. FBI personnel also repeatedly disregarded important requirements when they continued to seek renewals of that FISA surveillance while acknowledging, both then and in hindsight, that they did not genuinely believe there was probable cause to believe that the target was knowingly engaged in clandestine intelligence activities on behalf of a foreign power or knowingly helping another person in such activities. And certain personnel disregarded significant exculpatory information that should have prompted investigative restraint and re-examination. Yeah, they didn't do that because that's not what their fucking job was. It was to railroad Donald Trump. It's so crystal clear. Just make the, like, if you're going to make a conclusion, just say what happened. It's so obvious. Our investigation also revealed that the senior, that senior FBI personnel displayed a serious lack of analytical rigor towards the information that they received, especially information received from politically affiliated persons and entities. This information in part triggered and sustained Crossfire Hurricane and contributed to the subsequent need for Special Counsel Mueller's investigation. In particular, there was significant reliance on investigative leads provided or funded directly or indirectly by Trump's political opponents. The department did not adequately examine or question these materials and the motivation of those providing them, even when at about the same time the director of the FBI and others learned of significant and potentially contrary intelligence. So they knew, they knew that it was bullshit, but the reason they didn't investigate it is because they were fucking working for Hillary, folks. Could it be any more obvious? Allegedly. Keep me safe. In light of the foregoing... There is a continuing need for the FBI and the department to recognize that lack of analytical rigor, apparent confirmation bias, and an overwillingness to rely on information from individuals connected to political opponents caused investigators to fail to adequately consider alternative hypotheses and to act without appropriate objectivity or restraint in pursuing allegations of collusion or conspiracy between a U.S. political campaign and a foreign power. Although recognizing that in hindsight, much much is clearer, much of this also seems to have been clear at the time. We therefore believe it is important to examine past conduct to identify shortcomings and improve how the government carries out its most sensitive functions. <laughs> we have to just make sure we do a little bit better. No, 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 no Durham. That's not, that's not how we're looking at this at all. This is what the FBI exists to do. I know it. You know it. Stop lying. Section 5 discusses some of these issues more fully. This report does not recommend any wholesale changes in the guidelines and policies that the department and the FBI now have in place to ensure proper conduct and accountability and how counterintelligence activities are carried out. Carried out. So basically, we now know that the Hillary Clinton campaign is responsible for planting this story and then hoisting it on the American public through its media apparatus. And then lying about it on the debate stage, while simultaneously the FBI is investigating and pressuring and hemming up all of these people who are innocent, but they're still throwing the book at them and throwing away the key based off of, you know, deception or lies when they, they, they didn't do what they're being accused of, but like they get dates wrong or something. So they fucking toss them in jail. And, and this guy's conclusion is, we don't need any wholesale changes here, folks. <laughs> yeah, I think we fucking might. I think we might need some wholesale changes, Durham. Oh my God. This is so crazy. Rather, it is intended to accurately describe the matters that fell under our review and to assist the attorney general in determining how the department and the FBI can do a better, more credible job in fulfilling its responsibilities. Blah, 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 blah. Ultimately, of course, meeting those responsibilities comes down to the integrity of the people who take an oath to follow the guidelines and policies currently in place. Guidelines that date from the time of Attorney General Levi and that are designed to ensure the rule of law is upheld. As such, 
The answer is not the creation of new rules, but a renewed fidelity to the old. The promulgation of additional rules and regulations to be learned in yet more trained sessions would likely prove to be a fruitless exercise if the FBI's guiding principles of fidelity, bravery, and integrity are not ingrained in the hearts and minds of those sworn to meet the FBI's mission of protecting the American people and upholding the Constitution of the United States. What a joke. What a joke. So there you have it. Do you feel good? Was it as good for you as it was for me? <laughs> I mean, anybody with a fucking brain who's been following this story knew all of this. But like the fact that they had a multi-year investigation to demonstrate that we're not crazy. Once again, we're not crazy. Russia collusion was a lie. It was a lie. It was a lie, and it was a political lie at that. Set set out to tank Donald Trump to the benefit of Hillary Clinton. And the FBI cooperated the entire, the entire way. And even now, no wholesale change is necessary with the FBI after that. You think maybe we might need some wholesale changes? Some abolition and handcuffs? Yeah, I think so. I think that's a minimum ask, if I'm being totally honest. A minimum ask. Wow. In other words, the president of the United States, Donald Trump, was falsely accused of being a foreign agent of another nation, in this case, Russia, uh, ultimately being framed for treason, and the DOJ and the media and the Clinton campaign and the DNC and the list goes on and on aren't going to be held accountable even after Durham's report. Like, this is where we're at? We just like, hey, you guys lied to us for seven, eight years straight. Uh, you framed a man for treason. And you don't think that, like, everyone involved should be in prison forever? Am I losing my mind? It's fucking crazy. How does the New York Times cover it? How does the New York Times cover it? You'll love this. <laughs> They, they do a great job. John Durham's report on the FBI investigation of the Trump campaign campaigns, uh, excuse me, John Durham's report on the FBI's investigation into the Trump campaign's work with Russia, which produced no startling revelations, is being viewed by some conservatives as lending credence to their conspiracy theories about the U.S. agency. That's that, that's that's what we take away from the Durham report. Did you fucking read the executive summary? Did you read the 300 pages? I don't think you read any of it. I think that your co cooperation and corroboration of the lies planted by Hillary Clinton has been uncovered, and now you are dutifully carrying water for the Democrats and yourself again because you were culpable for propagating a lie that tried to frame a man for treason. I, In many ways, I would say that that should be criminal. If you knowingly did so. Wow. Let's see if my tweet pops up. Yeah, I said, uh, corporate news dutifully covers up the investigation, which proved their own, com own prior complicity and propagation of the Trump, Russia, Ukraine gate lies fixed your headline. <laughs> Cause that's really what they are doing. That's really what they're doing. And, uh, let's pivot now to Joe Biden lecturing Romanians about corruption. I just thought this was was too good. Corruption is a cancer. A cancer that eats away at a citizen's faith in democracy, diminishes the instinct for innovation and creativity. Already tight national budgets crowding out important national investments. It wastes the talent of entire generations, scares away investments and jobs, and most importantly, it divide, denies the people their dignity. It saps the collective strength and resolve of a nation. Corruption is just another form of tyranny. Boom, motherfuckers. You're right. 
that's exactly what it is, Joe. Unfortunately, you're one of the biggest proponents and participants in said corruption. When politicians can be bought, when courts can be manipulated, when the media becomes a tool of propaganda. <laughs> Hello? Did you, did you hear what I just read you for the last 45 minutes? That's exactly what he's describing. Exactly. FISA court manipulated with lies. The media pushes out those lies, allows the politician to lie to the public to get public support against a guy who's totally innocent. I mean, that's exactly what happened. There you will find a society that is susceptible to manipulation from the outside. Or the inside. There you'll find a society that loses control of its own destiny. Not only its political security, but its physical security and military readiness is also compromised. We've recently seen that in Ukraine. We saw how over a decade and a half of corruption literally has hollowed out their military institutions and weakened that country's very capacity to defend itself. So fighting corruption is more than just good government. It's self-defense. Man. Yeah, it is self-defense. We need self-defense. <laughs> this is why I'm such a big proponent of the Second Amendment. We need self-defense from you folks. Oh, man. I mean, if it, if it weren't coming from him, I would agree with much of what he's saying there. This is the reason that corruption is so dangerous, that it does sap our, our will, our capacity for innovation, our belief in the future. All of these things, that's a product of what we're living through. But it's a product of the man that's speaking these words. That's the reality, right? I mean, that's so crystal clear. That's what we're up against is that we have... We're ruled by incredibly corrupt people. And the FISA court, by its very nature, is unconstitutional. But then if you're going to, on top of that, feed the FISA court whole cloth fiction lies that you have planted, that you have funded the fucking generation of those reports, the Steele dossier, and then you use that to you know, tank someone's political campaign. Well, simultaneously, every single investigation that's totally legitimate into Joe Biden's uh, you know, family and their business dealings has been buried, including the New York Post New York Post reporting on Hunter Biden's laptop just prior to the election. Do you do you see? This is why when people say, no, Donald Trump isn't an outsider. Look, he may not be one of us, he's definitely not one of us, but he is an outsider to that, that narrow cabal that really runs shit. And you can't look at this story and conclude anything else. They don't do this to their own. They do this to people that aren't with them, that aren't with the game, that don't rock with that team. They tried to frame him for treason. They lied to him about troop counts in Syria. They lied and deceived and did everything to undermine him every step of the way. They impeached him multiple times. They've now brought prosecution charges for nonsense repeatedly. They will continue to do so. I didn't vote for Trump. I'm not a Trump supporter. Doesn't change the fact what this, what this tells us, what this informs us of is that an outsider will be taken out before they can control the reins of power. That's the conclusion. That's what you ought to be tussling with in this moment. Like, that's what you need to grapple with. That's the truth. If you aren't one of them, if you are, it doesn't matter if you're GOP or Democrat. There, there are GOP members that are absolutely on their team. If you are not on that team, they will do everything in their power to ruin you. And what does that portend for the future of America, much less democracy in America? Not good, thi not good things. Not good things. And this is why, while I very much respect the Vivek Ramaswamis and the RFK Juniors of the world, and, and even DeSantis and, and Trump talking about, you know, abolishing or reforming, and they don't say abolishing, but certainly reforming the FBI, it's not enough. Okay, you have a secret 
police force in this country. You don't have to be a historian of high acclaim to know what that portends for us moving forward. Great nations have fallen because of secret police forces. That's what the FBI has become. I would argue it has been that since, since, since its inception. However, it is that in such a unabashed, out in the open way today that they can do this. They can have an investigation that takes years to prove what transpired. And then the media will say nothing burger. And the guy who wrote the report will say, I don't see any reason for wholesale you know, reforms. Okay. Well, if you don't see any reason for wholesale reforms, then there's no negotiation to be had. It is abolition or bust. It has to go away. I'm sorry. I know you fear terrorists or whatever you think that they keep you safe from. You should be one trillion times more concerned about the existence of the FBI than you are concerned about the existence of some Muslim extremist thousands and thousands of miles away. That's the, that's the reality. It's true. You know it in your heart. Think about it deeply. Consider what it means and then demand it of your representatives and accept nothing less. If you expect America as a nation to survive, it is the only path forward. Am I wrong? I don't think so. If you want to support my work, go to libertylockdown.locals.com. Make sure you leave a like, comment, and subscribe on this episode. I really appreciate the support. If you want to follow me, I'm on Twitter at Liberty Lock Pod. And if you, yeah, seriously, go support my work, man. LibertyLockdown.locals.com. It doesn't cost you much per month and it helps keep me independent. Who else is going to tell you the truth like this? You can get it from the motherfucking New York Times, Washington Post, Fox News, firing Tucker Carlson. You're going to get it from them? Didn't think so. You're going to get it from Liberty Lockdown, bitch. <laughs> Check me out on Tower Gang tonight. We're out of here. Peace. Welcome to Liberty Lockdown. Please scan your barcode. Your liberty ain't gone, but yeah, it's on hold. Where did it come from and where did it go?